You might say today's show is for the birds, Christmas birds, holiday birds. That's how we get in the spirit of the season, Mother Nature style. Push off, weight transfer. Next, what do you get when you combine the techniques of rollerblading with skiing? Laura Shera gave it a try. He makes it look so easy. <laughs> And we meet a Minnesota family that's serious about their snowmobiles. No, not the latest and greatest, but the old vintage kind. Our Minnesota Bond Classic this week deals with forest management practices, but not with tractors, with horses, proving sometimes the old ways might be the best ways. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. The other day, I went into the general store in Minnetonka, you know, right on Highway 7. And there in the corner was a very beautiful Christmas tree all about birds, our feathered friends. In the corner of the general store, there stands a special tree, its boughs full of a Christmas message about the birds without the bees. Without our feathered friends, can't you see, the 12 days of Christmas could never be. The gift of love needs birds a calling and geese a lane, and another sitting in a pear tree. In the spirit of the season, this holiday tree also reminds us about the gift of birds birds that bring so much joy into our lives. The song of the loon. The beauty of a wood duck. A welcome sign of spring, the red wing. The noisy blue jay who yells at everybody. <laughs> That's fair. We too show our love of feathered visitors. We hang birdie treats to eat, seeds of many kinds and nifty shapes and sizes. Yet birds mean more to us than handouts and such. They give us mysteries of migration, where the wild goose goes. They leave us at the right time, but how do they know? Even Frank Sinatra noticed. I believe in nature in the birds, the crooner once said. If these things are what you mean by God, then I believe in God. Of all the birds of Christmas, the cardinal sits at the top. It can fly like Santa Claus in a suit so red and bright. Only cardinals end their day at sundown. Only Santa flies at night. <laughs> While the bird songs of winter tend to be short and sweet, most birds, despite the cold and snow, still try to tweet. Though not as often as Mr. Trump likes to tweet. To send a joyous holiday greeting, look what I've found. A wish to you and yours from all of us from Minnesota Bound. It goes like this. A lady named Yubi once said, to find happiness in life, simply listen to the birds. And don't hate nobody. Are you listening? Merry Christmas. Let's use our arms Next up, it's time to hit the Minnesota Winter Trails. Wanna ski or skate? How about both? Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers, Rapala Ice Force, Star Bank, and by Connecticut. Welcome back. You know, if you're a cross-country skier, you already have probably heard about skate skiing, they call it. Well, I hadn't, but my daughter Laura found out about it and gave it a try. 
Hello. Hey, Laura. Welcome to Thank you. Worth Winter Headquarters. Well, I'm excited to be here. I am so excited to learn how to skate ski, um, but I'm not quite sure the difference between cross country skiing and skate skiing. The classic ski is a ski that as you move, shuffle along, one leg and the opposite arm moving in the same direction, the skier will put pressure on the ski and engage this fish scale. In the skate ski, the difference is there's nothing to engage the snow. It has no wax, it has no fish scale, and you're constantly gliding on the snow. It's very similar to ice skating, rollerblading, so it does have that essence of flying. So today I want to give you a license to fly on snow. All right, I like that. So if I wanted to just get started, I've never done skate skiing before, what would be the first steps? Making sure that you've got the right size skis and poles for you. With classic skiing, the poles would go up to the top of the shoulder. With skate skiing, those poles are gonna go up to your nose. Boots for classic are gonna be cut off at the ankle. With the skate boot, you've got a more rigid sole for lateral stability, and you've got an ankle cuff that gives you much more stability from the ankle on down. All right, here we go. There's three elements to skate skiing, and that's push off, weight transfer, and balance, or glide. Because when you balance over your ski, you have a flat ski. A flat ski is a fast ski. He makes it look so easy. <laughs> oh, this is not that easy, Greg. Here we go. So remember, keep pressure on those heels. <laughs> keep those tips wide and kind of like duck walk. I've always wanted to look like a fool on television. <laughs> Let's use our arms like a speed skater and get your weight over your ski. Woo! This is a good workout. <laughs> well, we'll get on our holes now. Yay! So the thumb will go in the small hole and the strap will fit over your wrist. We're going to be doing a little drill we call the lock and load. I like that, lock and load. We're going to keep our arms always in this 90 degree Rosie the Riveter strong arm position. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our pull plant is back by our heel. You can see the angle is facing in the direction we're going. And what we're going to do is we're going to crunch and the V2 technique, down, over, up. Push off, weight transfer, balance. So now as we negotiate any hills and turns, you have to keep your feet light and keep them underneath you because you're gonna be doing little step turns. Oh boy. Use your edges. All right, Greg, thank you for the fun day and the fun lesson. Great, Laura, you did great. You learned the three elements of forward body movement, which was the push off, the weight transfer, and the glide. Um, you're ready to hit the trails. I love it. And the most important, you know, starting something new is not always easy, so taking a lesson is key. But most importantly, it's just get outdoors. So are you ready to keep skate skiing? Let's go. Okay, let's hit the trail. Hold your throttle. We found a Minnesota family who takes their sledding and their sleds seriously. Closed captioning is brought to you by Border View Lodge.
You know, they say the old snowmobiles never go away, they just stay off the trail. Well, maybe, but we found a family of folks, snowmobile enthusiasts, who bring back the old sleds. They are vintage snow horses now. Many Minnesota made a half century ago, but all Minnesota loved still today especially by these folks, Don and Louise Nelson. What are we, what are we doing? Freezing. <laughs> this historic site in and around the Nelson's pole barn says it all. To have, at the very least, a better year than last year? I've been collecting for 20 years. It just, it'd be hard to explain where I got them all. I just picked them up here and there, some were free. And, some were not, and you know, they all take some work. You, you spend a lot of time tinkering with them, getting them going, and especially a day. A few brand names may be familiar. Some gone, but not forgotten. Or simply old and stubborn about starting. Some more stubborn than others. Encouraged by starter fluid, one by one, they're ready to go. And so is the entire Nelson family. Would you believe 20 or more of all ages? Five years ago, we did this the first time and it, the family just thought it'd be fun to do this, just for a fun, fun family thing and it became so much fun that they want to do it every year. You know, we planned this weekend quite some time in advance and not knowing what the weather was going to be like, we can't do anything about it. It's below zero. With wind chill, it's probably 20 below. Yeah, it's different. Not a lot of people do this. Yeah. Anybody has the new, a lot of people have the new sleds, but not a lot of people have the old ones. And it's, um, it's not something everyone can do. It's unique, and I think we are a unique family anyway. And it's just, is perfect for what Dad has done for years and what he has gotten all of us to love. First stop, riding trails at Big Bog State Park, where the vintage sleds are celebrities. Time to move on. With a 20 below windshield, the family parade of old sleds pulls into the West Wind Resort on frozen Upper Red Lake. Another tradition, warm tacos. Just a fun time, we have a great family and it's just a good time to get together and we all get along, which is a good thing and, <laughs> and we just like it, it's just great. And I'm getting cold. Yeah. <laughs> Cheese. Up next, head north to Lyle, Minnesota to learn the art of logging the old-fashioned way. I pretty much am doing exactly what I planned from five on, so um, yeah, this is great. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery, Radco Truck Accessories, Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. You know, lots of us are fond of saying the old ways were the best ways, huh? Well, that might be true 
even when it comes to logging a forest. Despite what it seems, time in a forest does not stand still. Rather, it creeps slowly ahead, not much faster than an oak tree grows. But on this foggy morning, amid this foggy forest, the clock is ticking in reverse. Boy, what a beautiful day. Ticking backwards to a Minnesota logging camp as it might have been long ago. Back to the days of horses. And back to the days of horse loggers. They're good boys. The good boys are Belgian draft horses and Pertrons, each a half ton of pulling power. I pretty much am doing exactly what I planned from five on, so um, yeah, this is great. Meet horse logger Tim Carroll, CEO of Cedar River Horse Logging and Wood Products. This isn't just a job, it's a mission really to, you know, I really believe in what I'm doing. I, I hope that when I'm gone, whatever I've done has left the world a better place. Ho, ho. Even a woods that is being logged, logged with horses instead of machines. All right. The one thing that most landowners that contact me have in common is um, their number one concern is improving their forest, and they are sensitive to environmental concerns. Simply put, horses are more tender on the trees still standing than bulldozers. If a horse, because it's a living being, uh, starts to step on a sapling, it moves its foot around it. You know, you wouldn't step on a pencil. Well, a horse ain't gonna step on a, on a sapling if they can help it. This oak here is, uh, it's actually over mature, it's getting rotten. What I wanna do is put the tree down in that direction. The purpose of that is, I don't wanna damage these white pines. Our whole purpose in taking this out is to uh, improve the white pine stand, so if I drop the tree on top of them, it kinda defeats the purpose. Landowner Pete Jensen chose horse logging for the same reason. When I needed to thin the, the oak trees, I was looking around for something different, something that would have less impact on the, the trees that remained. Dropping a big oak tree is only the beginning. It smells good. After lunchtime, a bowl of stew cooked outside the old-fashioned way, Tim Carroll and hired hand Kurt Arner begin another process, as old as log houses. Again, horses have a job to do, bringing logs to the mills, where the fallen trees are shaped for a purpose. In this case, we're cutting beams for timber framing. All the construction here is oak. Yeah, it'll be around a lot longer than I will. Whether it's in horse logging or timber framing or a lot of our traditional things that we did in the past, uh, the skills that we've had are being lost. And, and uh, it just amazes me what people knew 100 years ago that maybe we've forgotten. It's very satisfying to me to have my customers know where the tree came from, uh, and, and they have a direct connection to it. Homes and furniture and warmth. Some of us tend to forget where it all comes from. And when another tree must fall, the horse logger goes forth as a team to take what they must while leaving the forest in good health, untrampled, unscarred. I love working with animals and I love being in the woods and I can't think of anything better to do. Wonderful to see the horses work and the man working them, huh? Beautiful. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Shera, and my auntie, star of the show here, is Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. 
and to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.